The Bartholin glands, also known as the major vestibular glands, are found on both sides of the vaginal opening. They lie inferior to the vestibular bulb and deep to the bulbocavernosus muscle. These glands are approximately one centimeter in diameter. Their ducts are 1.5 to 2 centimeters long and open just distal to the hymenal ring at 5 and 7 o'clock. These glands produce mucus and following trauma or infection, either duct may swell and obstruct to form a cyst. Bartholin duct cysts typically measure 1 to 4 centimeters in diameter and are most commonly asymptomatic. Patients with larger cysts, however, may complain of vaginal pressure or dyspareunia. If infected, an abscess may form rapidly within the duct and produce significant pain. Classically, a fluctuant mass is found either on the right or left side of the introitus, external to the hymenal ring, and at the lower aspect of the vulva. Both symptomatic Bartholin gland duct cyst and Bartholin gland duct abscess are treated with incision and drainage. Incision and drainage alone may give immediate relief. However, unless a new duct ostium is created, the incised edges following incision and drainage will seal and mucus or pus will reaccumulate. Thus, the goal of Bartholin gland duct incision and drainage is to empty the cystic cavity and create a new epithelialized tract for gland drainage. For this purpose, a word catheter is used. This catheter appears similar to a very small Foley catheter. It is constructed of a one inch latex tube stem that has an inflatable balloon at one end and a saline injection port at the other. Most procedures are performed as an outpatient procedure in the office or emergency room. The patient is placed in dorsal lithotomy position and the area is cleaned with an antiseptic solution. Local anesthesia is sufficient for most cases. This can be achieved by infiltrating the skin overlying the planned incision with a 1% lidocaine solution. The incision should be made along the inner surface of the cyst or abscess. It should be placed just outside and parallel to the hymenal ring at 5 or 7 o'clock on the vaginal opening. This position mimics the normal anatomy of the gland duct opening and avoids creation of a fistulous tract to the outer surface of the labia majorum. A one centimeter incision is made using a scalpel with a number 11 blade. The blade pierces the skin and underlying cyst or abscess. Copious mucus or pus under pressure will be ejected upon knife blade insertion. For these reasons, providers should use protective eyewear. For patients with an abscess, cultures for Neisseria gonorrhea and Chlamydia trachomatis can be obtained from spontaneously extruded pus. Mucus strain from a Bartholin gland duct cyst need not be cultured. The tip of a small hemostat is placed within the drain cavity and the tips are opened and closed to lice adhesions and open loculations of pus or mucus within the cavity. The tip of a deflated word catheter is placed within the empty cyst cavity. A syringe is used to inject 2 to 3 cc's of sterile saline through the catheter port to inflate the balloon. The balloon is inflated to reach a diameter that will prohibit the catheter from falling out of the incision. The injection port of the word catheter can then be tucked inside the vagina. This prevents the balloon from being pulled out by traction from labial movement. Abscesses are typically surrounded by significant cellulitis and in such cases broad spectrum antibiotics to treat a polymicrobial infection are warranted. Patients are encouraged to soak in a warm tub bath twice daily. Coitus should be avoided for patient comfort and prevention of word catheter removal. Ideally, the catheter is left in place for four to six weeks. Commonly, however, a catheter will be dislodged before this time. There is no need to try and replace the catheter if displaced, and attempts to reinsert it are typically not possible due to cavity closure.